Okay, so what we're, what we're going to be talking about today is the PSAT, and we're going to be specifically focusing on the math portion because the PSAT score of a 430 can be used for the Elder EOC Concordance score for graduation purposes. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. What I did was I, I pulled a scale score, and we need a 430. And what that means is we need to get 15 correct, okay? What I'd rather shoot for is get like between 19 and 20 correct. But what, we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to target 20 easy questions to answer. We're not gonna focus on the super hard ones because this is a time test. We wanna make sure we have enough time to do the easy ones. So what we're gonna do is we gotta figure out, uh, we need to get 15 correct. And how it's broken out is there's a no calculator part of 17 questions, and then there's a calculator part of 31 questions. So that's a ratio of probably one third to two thirds, okay? So what we could do is we can target five here and 10 here, and we'll get our 15 score. Now, logically, let's, let's go, let's try to hit about eight here and probably about 14 here, okay? If we focus on 18 and 14, we can make sure that we hit that score of 15 correct. So that's what we're gonna go, go ahead and do. Um, as you can see, this fall of, 2000, fall of 2020, so you may have the fall of 2020 or the fall of 2022. It doesn't matter because they're both practice test two and practice test two. So we're not going to worry, we're not gonna go ahead and worry about that. We're just gonna focus on the actual questions, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this one to the side because it's the same thing, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna target the easy questions. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through these and make sure that they're easy, okay? And right off the bat, I can see that these are some easy questions. So what I wanna do is I wanna focus on that one. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for, in terms of D and T. So we're just gonna solve for R on this when we already have this answer. I wanna do that one, that one's an easy one. Um, this one's an easy one, because we can just plug and chug on that one. And this one is just getting, uh, just solving for X, I think. Yeah, that should be fairly easy. So we're gonna circle that one too. All righty. So, oh, this one's an easy one. I can already see through the answers what the answer is probably going to be. I know what this one is. This They always have this kind of question on the test. I'm gonna teach you how to do that, okay? That one's pretty easy. Oh, and I love sales tax. That one's easy. Oh, look at all of them we've already got. Wow, okay, so we are, mm, that can be a little complicated, so we're just, well, we'll just get that one for now. Let's see, we only need one more. Ooh, I can do this one. Ooh, if I need to, I can do this one. That one's pretty easy. Let's skip this one for now, because those can be confusing. Let's skip this one. And the end is graphed, X, Y, plan is question. Let's forget that one, we're not gonna do parabolas. Okay, so we did good, so let's see. How many we're gonna target? We're gonna target in this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. So, so now we're gonna go back and work out these problems. Remember, this is a no calculator section, so you know the calculations are gonna be easy. So here, what we wanna do, which of the following is the equivalent form of the expression 15X plus 24AX? What do they have in common? Okay, one's odd, one's even, so we can't do that. Uh, they both have X, okay? So I'm gonna pick out the X, but that's about all that we can pull out of it. So it's gonna have, it can't be this one and it can't be that one, okay? So what we can do is 15 plus 24A and do distribute the X. So we can go woot, woot. Um, this one could be working if we had three X, but we don't. We It only shows us X, so it would have to be this one. So that would be our answer. Now, this one would have worked if it was five plus eight A, three X, because then we would distribute that out and we could get that um, 15 X plus 24 A X. 
but it's only giving us an X and that won't give it to us. That's only five X plus eight AX. And that's not the answer. So that one's wrong as well. So then if we distribute that out, it would be 15 X plus 24 AX. That works, that has to be the answer, okay? Number two, okay, so the formula is D equals RT is used to calculate T at the constant rate. Based on this formula, what is the rate R in terms of D and T? So what we're doing here is we're solving for R. What we have to do is we have to get R by itself. What happens, remember our worksheet of one-step equations, what happens when the R is connected to the T? What we have to do is divide by, so it would be D equals RT, we're going to divide by, we're trying to pull out the R by, we're trying to get R by itself, so we're going to divide by the T. So R is going to equal D over T. Okay, so that goes back to the one-step equations. If you're confused as to what we're doing, that is the number one rule on the blue PERT uh, reference sheet so that you can pull that back out and refer to that number one rule. That's what we're doing. If the, if the letter is connected to a number, we gotta divide by that number to get that letter all by itself. So that's what we're doing in this situation, okay? So here's the next one. Which of the following ordered pairs, X, Y, satisfies both equations? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the easier of the two. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you know that this is going to be X and this is going to be Y. And what we're going to do is just calculate it. So it would be 0 equals Y uh, minus 4 minus 4. Okay, that can't be it, can it? So it can't be this one. That doesn't work. All right, so let's plug in 2 equals 6 minus 4. Oh, that one works, right? 6 minus 4 is 2, so let's try it here. y is 6, that's what I'm plugging in here, equals 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 4. Okay, so 2 squared is what? 4 plus 3 times 2 is 6 minus 4. Okay, so we got 4 minus 4, so we can get rid of that. 6 equals 6. That works too. So the answer has to be that one. Okay, that's how you do those. That's what I call plug and chug, okay? I pick the easier of the two and just start. You always know if you have a number, uh, two numbers uh, split by a comma, and in parentheses, you know the first number is going to be x and the second number is going to be y. So we know we can just plug those in. That's how that works. Okay, and we have which of the following is a solution to the equation? Okay, so we got a two-sided variable. I have a worksheet on this. If you need it, Ms. Martin has a worksheet on this. Um, so what we want to do is we want to just rewrite it. 2x to the second plus 4x equals 3 plus 3x to the second. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're going to, we got to get everything to one side. So we got to go minus 4x and get that over here, minus 4x, okay? So that will make, we'll have 0 equals x to the second minus 4x plus 3. Okay, so now this is a, a trinomial. So now what we're going to do is we got to do FOIL. When we see that, we got to FOIL. So this has got to be an x, this has got to be an x. What two numbers multiplied together are gonna give me three, but added together is gonna be giving me negative four. That would be negative three times negative one. Multiplied together is gonna to give me a positive three, but added together is gonna to give me a negative four. Okay, so then we gotta make each one of them minus three equals zero. And we gotta solve for that, and x minus one equals zero. So then we know that we gotta do plus three here, plus three here, and you get x equals three. And you gotta go plus one here and plus one here, and you got x equals one. So now, 
We got to go back up to the answers and which one fits it. We got three or one. Nope, we can't. We don't have positive one. We have a negative one, but we have a three. So we can answer that question right there. That's the answer. Oh, I didn't answer this one. All right, so we'll continue working on number six of the note calculator section. The equation y equals 36 plus 18x models the relationship between the height y in inches of a typical golden delicious apple and the number of years x. Okay, so this is the years. So how many inches does it grow per year is what I'm asking. It's going to be 18 inches, right, per year because x represents the number of years, so we know that. If the equation is graphed in the xy plane, what is indicated by the y-intercept? Okay, so that's this number right here, the 36. What does that 36 represent? That means that we, if it's like um, five years, you're gonna put the five there and you're gonna times that by 18, but then the 36 is the initial number. So we gotta look for that. The a, So we, let's read our answers. The age in years of a typical apple tree when it is planted? No, not the age, because the age is that X. The height in inches of a typical tree when it is planted, correct. When it's planted, it starts at 36 and then it grows 18 inches per year. So that would be the answer. We can look the number of years it takes to a typical, no, that's not right. That's not right. The number of inches a typical tree grows each year? No, it's 18 would be that answer. So that won't be right either. So it has to be B, okay? So six is B. Okay, now, next one, seven. Giovanni wants to buy shirts that cost $19.40 each and sweaters that cost $24.80 each. An 8% sales tax will be applied to the entire purchase, okay? So if Giovanni buys two shirts, which the equation relates to the number of sweaters purchased, P, okay, and the total cost in dollars, Y. Okay, so the, we got to have Y is the total cost. This is the cost for a sweater. This is a cost for a shirt, and we're going to have two for P. And then we're going to times it. This is how you, how you calculate tax to a purchase. You do 1.08 because that's 8% tax is attached to it. So you count the one because that's counting the the sales, the, the price of the goods you're selling, but then you have to add in another 8%. So you go 1.08 times the total purchase, and that'll give you the total amount. So that's what has to be the answer, okay? Next one, um, okay. So a line is graphed in the XY plane, has a positive slope and a negative Y intercept. Okay, so Y intercept, x-intercept, okay? So if the line has a positive slope, we know a positive slope has to go this way. That's a positive slope, okay? So we know it has to go that way, and it has to start with a negative. So a negative, it could only, it can't be this one and it can't be that one, so it has to be one of these two. But a negative three would be going down. We can't do that, we can't have that because that's going in the wrong direction. That's not a positive. So it would have to be this one, okay? So this is positive, this is negative. That's a negative slope. This is a positive slope. Remember, slope is always equal to rise over run, okay? And in the case of a negative uh, slope, you would not rise, you would drop and then you would run. So just remember, slope is always rise over run. A positive slope is this way, a negative slope is going down, okay? You usually have one of those questions on every test. Okay, a parachute design uses 18 separate pieces of rope. Okay, so 18 separate pieces of rope. Each rope must be 270, okay? and no more than 280. So it looks like we gotta go in between. It can't be this one because we gotta times it by 18. So we're gonna do just some quick math times 18. I can't believe they're making us do this. We don't have a calculator, but let's do that 56. 
um, 16 plus 21, or 16 plus five is 21, zero, zero, seven, two, zero, six, eight, four. Okay, so it's gonna have to be one of these two. So let's do the math on this other one. 280 times 18. Let's go zero, four, six, 16, plus six is 22, zero, one, oh, z excuse me, zero, eight, two, zero, 10, 11, five, 50, Oh, it, it, 54, I, I didn't do that right, 50, zero. So it'd have to be this one right here. So literally all we're doing is times 18 times 270 and 18 times 280. And that's, that's the answer we get, okay? The next one, a carpenter has $60 with which to buy supplies. Okay, I love these questions. You're gonna see this on every test, so be ready. Um, and this is super easy to do. A carpenter has $60 with which to buy supplies. So you can't have any more than 60 on this, right? So it has to be less than 60. So it can't be greater than. So we know this one's automatically out. It could be this one. It cannot be this one. And it could be this one. So we already knocked out two of them. So it's super easy. Then the carpenter needs to buy both nails and screws. Okay, so we got... $12.99 per box for nails, so that's the end, so that's good right there, and $14.99 for the screws, okay? And if N represents the number of boxes of nails and S represents the number of boxes of screws, okay, which of the following system of inequalities models this situation? Okay, N plus S cannot be less than one. It has to be greater than one, right? So N has to be greater than one and S has to be greater than one, of course. And we gotta figure out how many um, Ns we can fit with how many nails, boxes of nails, and how many boxes of screws that would be less than $60. So it can't be N plus N, N the box of nails plus the box of screws has to be less than one box, that can't be. So we know that's wrong. So the only logical choice would be this one, okay? So now what we're, what's happening is we're running out of time because we only get 25 minutes for this test, okay? So what I'm going to do is stop here because now I just answered 10 questions for you, okay? If we can get those 10 questions, and then what I want you to do is I want you to choose either A for the remainder of the questions or D for the remainder of the questions. Do that and you'll probably, uh, with. Uh, oh, and these are just blanks. So let's just not worry about those at all. We ran out of time. If you do have time, one of these is gonna be an easy question, but right now we're not gonna worry about that, okay? We're gonna move on to the number, the math with calculator. So I'm gonna stop there and we're gonna have a different sheet for that one.